Morning, dude. Morning, bro. Yeah, we're gonna rebuild some turbos today, bro. Yeah. Yo, what is up everybody? Your buddy Aaron here. Welcome back to another Boosted G35 video and we're rocking the AA Supply hoodie. Starting to get a little cold out. If you guys want to get it, you guys can head over to AA pick you up one. But check it out, we got a little uh, little update on the G35. We got the engine out still, of course. That's where we left off in the last video. So a little bit of time, we got all the turbos off and uh, just got the manifolds on there as well as the turbo lines. Spent some time on it yesterday, got uh, a little greasy, a little oily last night because we went ahead and put in a new sandwich plate for feeding the turbos instead of having it uh, be fed by an oil pressure uh, sensor hole area over here. So uh, pressure sensor for the gauge on the inside of the car. This is our stock oil pressure sensor connecting right to that little spot right there in the upper oil pan. There's another little connection right here that I had capped off that was actually connected to feeding the turbos. But now we got this new sandwich plate in here and it has two uh, one eighth ports on each side of the sandwich plate, uh, which is perfect for feeding our turbos. So went ahead and rerouted those lines. Everything is like much cleaner now. I also added the 1.6 millimeter turbo restrictors in there so that they're not going to be sending way too much oil over to the, uh, you know, to the turbos. So we'll have, you know, less of a chance of blowing those seals, which is good. So uh, got our restrictors on there, got our new sandwich plate. They're going to be fed to the turbos a lot better now. They're just a little loose right now so that I can go ahead and hook up the lines, of course, to the turbos. Um, we've got our bigger uh, oil filter on there. Um, and that's really it. Of course, our oil cooler is going to be connected right at the bottom of the sandwich plate running all the way over to our oil cooler right there. So yeah, no turbos on there. That's because you guys can see. In the beginning of this video, we actually uh, started breaking them down. I broke down one of the turbos and one of them was leaking. Um, that was on the driver's side. On the inside, one of the seals blew, I, I guess because of the crank pressure, because it wasn't smoking during the entire break-in. So I think when we put it on the dyno and I uh, had a closed uh, catch can system, it, it put way too much pressure to, to the turbos. Also, um, we're running at like 110 PSI when we're, when we're like, like matted. Um, as far as oil pressure. So uh, with a lot of oil pressure, it could cause uh, the oil to pass those seals as well too. So we took it apart. I got some pictures right here. You can see like there's some oil webbing on the inside of the turbo, which is, it's not good. It means it's leaking. That's what caused all that smoke to come out of the exhaust. So good thing we're gonna be uh, rebuilding them. I got some Mamba Tech uh, rebuild kits. They're like upgraded bearings, things like that. I was gonna get a billet compressor wheel, but you're not even really gonna be able to see it underneath the car and there's no real gains to getting a billet wheel um, and it's just a lot more expensive. So we're gonna be replacing all the bearings and all the seals and that's pretty much it rebuilding the turbos putting them back on and uh, also of course added our restrictors and things like that so that should be good turbos should be nice and mint once we put this thing all back together while the motor was out too I also did a coolant delete uh, this uh, this coolant usually goes to the throttle body and the uh, the intake I deleted it here and uh, back here as well capped everything off so that uh, no coolant is gonna be going to our intake it's super hot all year round here so we don't need any coolant going to the intake it's really just for for heating up the engine uh, in like a snow type of area cold area um, yeah that's really it so maybe a tiny one or two more horsepower from from deleting that coolant we've got our new wastegate springs over here which I'll be installing in a future video they even threw in some nice little jelly beans and a nice little lanyard thanks boost lab appreciate you guys um, but yeah I got some 13 psi springs for the wastegates uh, right here gonna go ahead and load them up and uh, yeah they're gonna be uh, putting down the minimum of 13 psi pretty much going to the boost that's just, that's like the lowest setting that I can adjust it to and we can go as high as tripling it but I don't think I want to pass maybe 20 pounds of boost on on the G35 so let's head inside I'm gonna start breaking down the turbo and show you pretty much how to get a, a TDO 5 H 18 G ready turbo rebuilt by yourself check it out guys so here's the first turbo that I went ahead and uh, tore down I watched a ton of videos on YouTube and a lot of them are super informative but there's a lot of different turbos and a lot of different designs out there so for this one specific I had to find the right video that actually you know was like a TDO5 or a TDO4 or something that was very similar to this one 
and I found one so I was able to learn from it and take everything apart and once you get your mind around everything and how it all works you, you it's pretty it's super easy to go ahead and remove one of these this is a older turbo it's a journal bearing type of turbo instead of a ball bearing type of turbo I got it all torn apart here you can see we have the compressor wheel for the exhaust side the compressor wheel for the intake side and all these c-clamps that hold everything together as as far as uh, the housings you got our little bearings over here so this one goes on the little compressor wheel right here this one sits inside of this little guy right here and uh, yeah each each every little piece here has its own little function so pretty much I got new bearings I got the new thrust plate uh, this will be upgraded new bearings will be upgraded this little cap guy will be upgraded and thicker everything's just gonna be a little bit stronger I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys on this other turbo this is the passenger side turbo this one I don't see any signs of leaking I don't think it's bad I think it's fine I could probably leave it the way that it is but I've already ordered two rebuild kits so we're gonna go ahead and get to it anyway and start rebuilding this little guy right here you can see that I marked it off I got the two lines here and one line right here so that this kind of lines up into the middle right here so I could put the turbos back together uh, the way that they came apart which is good so we're gonna start by removing this c-clamp getting the housings separated and then uh, start removing the intake housing off of this side and that same thing as as far as the exhaust side that's really it guys so let's go ahead and dive right into it and uh, let's start tearing it apart and show you guys what to do now there is no doubt that I should have done this rebuild before putting the turbos in originally I bought the kit used and everything but I was trusting the guy that they were previously rebuilt and to be honest they were I actually see a date on here right at the bottom you can see whatever shop that this was rebuilt from you can see the word matte and then it says 11 11 20 I think it says 19 or 17 so it was either rebuilt last year or like three years ago so I don't I don't really know but it, it looks like a 19 to me um, just depends on the guy's handwriting I guess and uh, yeah so so Matt thank you for rebuilding them but um, I, I accidentally blew the seals so sorry let's go ahead and start tearing this thing down Now that you have the C-clamp off, you should be able to just remove that. And you can go ahead and remove the exhaust side compressor housing and just put that to the side. You're gonna wanna clean that up because there's pretty much the uh, the surface in there is the seal that goes uh, against this exhaust side. So yeah, it would be good to go ahead and clean that up with some brake clean, whatever the, whatever you need to go ahead and get that out of there. Um, so we got our exhaust side compressor wheel right here. Now we wanna go ahead and remove the intake side compressor housing. And we have a big old C-clamp on the inside of here uh, that is holding the cartridge on the inside of the turbo housing. So I got these special C-clamp removers. We'll go ahead and just put them in the holes and go ahead and Squeeze it together and remove the C-clamp. Just like so. Now we're just gonna do our best to kind of wiggle out the center cartridge. Sometimes this can be really difficult to do. Um, it was kind of tough on the other one. There we go. All right. So here is our cartridge. We got our presser housing right here on the cold side. And same thing, we're gonna go ahead and uh, use brake clean just to clean all uh, the inside here, get all the excess like oil, debris, whatever else is in there, out of there. So we're gonna go ahead and put those to the side. So here we are left with our turbo cartridge. Everything right here is gonna be balanced together by the shop that rebuilds it pretty much. Since we're not gonna be able to rebalance it ourselves, what we're gonna do so we're gonna leave little markings right here on the post as well as the compressor wheel so that we know uh, where to line it up when we're putting it all back together so that it will be as close to balance as possible. Uh, these things spin upwards of like 200,000 RPM, which is super fast. Yeah, any little off balance, it can it can throw it off. So yeah, that's it. Um, you can see there's like little shavings inside of the compressor wheel that lets you know that they were balanced before because um, that's where they remove the weight to balance everything off on the other side. Same thing over here, some little nicks inside the compressor wheel. Next thing I'm gonna do is use a little pick tool to go ahead and dig in here and get this little O-ring out. This is what seals the cold, si cold side of the turbo. Pull that o-ring out of there it looks pretty new um, I think they were rebuilt fairly recently but they come in our kit so we're gonna go ahead and replace them anyway now that we got the seal out what we're gonna want to do is remove the shaft and everything on the inside where the compressor wheels are first let me just take off this little gasket here oh it's already breaking apart look at that brand new gasket 
All right. So I've got a 3 8 socket on one side connected to a ratchet that we're going to use to hold still. And then I got my electric impact on the other side with a 12 millimeter 12 point socket that we're going to use right here on the compressor wheel. Now what's different about this than any other bolt is that you're going to want to do righty loosey, lefty tighty. That's pretty much how all turbines work. They're pretty much opposite as, as to regular threads. Um, this way they don't pretty much unbolt themselves when they're going super fast. So make sure you have your, your ratchet on tighten, same thing as, uh, as your electric impact and we're going to go ahead and just buzz it off. All right, went ahead and buzzed it off. We got our nut right here, and we have our we got our super lightweight cold side turbine. I'm gonna go ahead and just place that down. So over here on the intake side, we got a little bit of oil residue, which is normal for the bearings on the inside. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and use a little flathead screwdriver just to kind of feed this middle uh, bearing portion out. But before we do that, we got to remove the C-clamp. So I'll go ahead and take our C-clamp remover. Get that guy out of the way. Now we're gonna try and feed this center piece up. Alright. So we just got our thrust plate cap out, as well as this little guy on the inside with a little seal. Oh, okay. That worked. <laughs> it just kind of shoved out the exhaust side turbine. So this is a little cap that pretty much caps off the inside of right here. It's gonna be super like gunked up, full of like oil residue and like kind of just burnt oil and whatnot. This is the turbine shaft. Uh, when you remove it, it does come with a little bearing. You go ahead and just slide the bearing off. Put that over to the side. There's also a little called piston ring as well. This is also what seals them, what can cause some oil p passing through them, can cause some some leaks. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this little this little piston ring right here. You pretty much just gotta feed it around this little uh, these little two ribs right here and uh, take it off. The way I got it off was I took the middle of the C's and I lifted them up and sort of locked my my screwdriver in there like that. And then I used another screwdriver to kind of feed to kind of feed it around. So you're gonna to wanna to do that to go ahead and remove it. Try your best not to bend any of these uh, these turbines right here. So that little piston ring can be super tedious to remove. It's kind of pissing me off right now. So I'm gonna put it to the side and take a break on that. I'll go back, I'll get back to it later. Right now we're gonna go ahead and remove the inner seal on the inside here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my pick again and we'll just start uh, picking at it to get it out of there. A little seal. All right, so we've got our second seal out of there. Go ahead and set that off to the side. And now we have pretty much full access to our thrust bearing. We're gonna go ahead and pop that out with our fingers. Comes right out. And now we have this little bearing top hat that we can take out. And then we can actually take out the bearing that's inside right there. And that's it, we got our bearing out, we got the top hat out, and all of those parts we're gonna be upgrading with our Mama Tech. A rebuild kit. So we have our cartridge right here. Now we're just gonna go ahead and clean the shit out of it. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that I'm looking at it, it almost looks like 11, 20, 15, almost. I don't even know, like, or 11? Like, what the hell? It's an old rebuild right there. Check it out, now the compressor housing looks so much cleaner. Check it out guys, I just went ahead and rebuilt this passenger side uh, turbo here. Uh, this is the one that had the major boost leak and uh, was pretty much smoking, but everything internally seemed really good with this one. The one that was leaking was the driver's side over here that was leaking on one of the inner seals here. This little guy right here is what was causing too much oil to go into the exhaust side. Um, so I have all the pieces of this turbo right here. I'm gonna be rebuilding this one on camera when we show you guys what I did uh, to pretty much get this turbo uh, back to pretty much you know working condition. I mean, it was working before, it just had a bad boost leak, but um, upgraded the bearings, it did all that good stuff. This kit has literally everything you need. This little dirty dust cap right here, you get a brand new one right here. The thrust bearing, you get a nice upgraded one. Same thing with the thrust bearing caps right here and uh, just regular size bearings that fit in there. And yeah, you get everything you need, all the little piston rings. Um, and yeah, they good stuff right there. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into it. Um, I got a little bit of oil right here because we do need to lubricate up the uh, the bearings and everything before we go ahead and install them into the cartridge housing. 
uh, which is right here. So we're gonna be working on this guy right here, putting the bearings in there, putting the seals on there. Before we do that, I just wanted to show you guys, there's like no play. There's a little bit of back and forth play, which is normal with journal bearings. That's where all the oil uh, will pretty much fill in and make it super solid, but no noise. Everything is straight. Everything was balanced before. There's markings inside that these turbos were rebuilt before and they were in really good shape. Um, I checked the inner uh, bearing pretty much journals and they are, uh, they're nice and clean. They're not scraped up or anything like that. They're pretty smooth and solid. So pretty stoked about that. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do with the cartridge is take our new rear seal and we're gonna wanna just kinda test fit it. So we're just gonna go ahead and stick it in the top right here. Just wanna be careful when you're pressing it in there. You just wanna be able to check the clearance of the seal. It should be, since it's like a C-clamp, it's gotta be pushed in and then you're gonna wanna use your feeler gauge. You're gonna wanna use uh, 0 .005 millimeters and see if you can uh, see if you can put your fueler gauge right in between uh, where like the piston ring ends meet and if you can put it in there as a 0.5 and you can't go any higher than that then you're good you are within spec so we are within spec I'm gonna go ahead and remove that ring now take it out put it to the side and uh, we're gonna start uh, pretty much installing our bearings onto this side of the cartridge so we have a little c-clamps that kind of hold our bearings in place um, they look perfectly fine I'm not gonna be replacing those even though I have replacements I just don't have the right tool to kind of take those out without damaging any of the bearing walls so I'm gonna leave those in there they're not damaged everything is cool they seat the bearings just fine and they've been replaced before on these turbos so I'm gonna skip that but we're gonna go ahead and uh, just lubricate up our new bearings we got our new bearings right here just dip them in oil make sure they are full of oil and then you can go ahead and just slide it in place and it should fit just fine. Once it slides in there, you're gonna wanna use a little pick tool to kinda get in there and make sure you can move the bearing around freely. Make sure, just give it a couple turns cause you don't want any debris to lock it up, especially on the first like startup. So it slides in and out perfectly fine, left and right perfectly fine. That's good, that's in its seat. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull out the upgraded bearing, uh, thrust bearing cap. We're gonna get this thing pretty oiled up too and just go ahead and drop it right on top. Oops, not in there. So we're gonna go ahead and take our thrust bearing cap and put it right on top of the bearing. Um, since this is an upgraded thrust bearing cap, sometimes you're gonna to have to like machine the inside of this cartridge so that it can fit uh, the, out the outer length of the new upgraded bearing. But I have over a millimeter of clearance here with the upgrade, so I don't think I'm gonna to have to get this thing machined. I think it'll be fine. Um, so we're gonna continue with the rebuild. So we're gonna get our new thrust bearing. I'm gonna go ahead and put some oil pretty much in all of the little uh, dig outs that it has in there. Put it face down. Lining up with the other things on here. All right, so we got that in there. We're gonna go ahead and break out our new seals here. This is uh, this is the large one for the cold side, so we're gonna go ahead and put that to the side. And then we have the smaller one right here that's gonna go right inside of here. Right after you put in the thrust bearing, it's time to put in the seal. So we're gonna go ahead and same thing, just oil it up, make sure it creates a really good seal, and then we can start feeding it in there. And there we have it, we got our new turbo seal installed. So now we're left with this end cap here as well as the uh, the, the front seal. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and feed the front seal onto the end cap with the open end first. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, just get some oil on it, of course. So open-ended down first and slip it on there, just like that. So we're left with this heavy end piece right here, this little cap, oh God. We're gonna take this little shield and just go ahead and line it up with this. If it doesn't move around. We're gonna take that front seal, what we just put together, and we're gonna go ahead and feed it in here. Pretty much the same way that we put the seal on here, um, except for the opposite, we're gonna do it the, uh, the closed end first, so that we can kind of snap it into place. You wanna make sure you snap it into place hard because you wanna make sure that the, uh, the little end cap sticks out further than this plate right here, because uh, that's what's gonna catch on to the turbine. So you can see it's a little elevator right there, we're good. It's also like a bearing, you can just spin this thing around. So with this little open area right here, that's where we're gonna put pretty much the part of the shield that sticks upward. So we're gonna go ahead and just lay it down flat. Right there. And then push it into place. All right, once you have that cap into place and everything is good, you have your little bearing here that's elevated. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put in our new C-clamp. All right, so we got our C-clamp in there. We're pretty much finished off with this with this portion. We're gonna go ahead and flip it around and install our bearing on this side. So we'll take our other little bearing, go ahead and get some oil on it, make sure it is covered. All right, and it just kind of gently floats down, which is nice. We're gonna do the same thing and just go ahead and move around the bearing, make sure it's not locked up, make sure it can move around freely. And now we have our exhaust turbine and this new piston ring seal that we're gonna go ahead and install on there. We're gonna go ahead and make sure we get some oil 
around here, same thing around around the seal here. All right, so same thing, we're gonna use the closed end to go first. Over one, and then we have to go over the other one. All right, and there we have it. Got our new seal installed on the exhaust side. All right, so we're gonna take our new cap, we're gonna go ahead and put that on first. Nice and shiny. Then we're gonna go ahead and feed our exhaust turbine in there. Make sure you line it up with all of the bearings inside. Just put, feed it in there nice and easy. Make sure that the shaft right here is lubricated up. And then uh, we're just gonna be spinning it while we're uh, pushing it in. And there we have it. So exhaust side is installed. No play, everything's nice, nice and easy. Spins really good. So now we're gonna take our bigger seal. We're gonna go ahead and lubricate this thing as well, put some oil on it making sure that it seals very good. We're gonna go ahead and wrap it around the cartridge into the seat where the seal goes. And there we have it. Got our new seal installed. So now here's the tricky part. We're gonna be taking our aluminum turbine, cold side turbine. We're gonna be installing it back onto the spindle. All right. And now we have it marked um, because we wanted to make sure we put it back how we how we got it so that it's still balanced. So you can see I have a black mark here on the turbine and then a black mark right there on the, on the spindle. We're gonna go ahead and line those up. This kit does come with a new bolt, but before we put that on, we're gonna be using some Loctite. This is just some 272 red Loctite. It'll make sure that this bolt stays nice and tight so it doesn't come undone. And uh, this is good for up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is nice, good for exhaust temps. All right, so we got a Loctite on there. We're gonna go ahead and lefty tighty. Most turbos of the size, you're pretty much good uh, going down to about 100 inch pounds and then one quarter of a full turn, so about 90 degree turn. And that should lock everything in tight enough. Um, the way that it spins, it, it doesn't really un undo its own bo bolt anyway. Just make sure it's good and tight and ready to go. And there we have it guys, we got our uh, cartridge rebuilt, that is the main part of the turbo rebuild. Uh, everything else we're putting back together is just the turbo housings. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and give it a nice little free spin. Everything feels really good. Got no play other than just the fact that it has no oil. There's a little bit, a tiny, like very, very tiny, minor left to right play. But there is absolutely no in and out play, which is exactly what you want. It spins good, no noise, doesn't get caught up on anything. So now we got our cold side housing right here. Pretty much just go ahead and stick this back in here. Uh, but first, we wanna make sure we line this up. We wanna make sure that our, our turbo is facing the right way, that our oil feed uh, return line is facing the right way, and things like that. So before we go ahead and put this back together with the C-clamp, we wanna make sure that uh, the turbo and the cartridge are sitting in the correct orientation so that the oil inlet feed as well as the oil drain feed are in the correct location uh, for your setup when it's on the car. So we're gonna go back over to the engine right now. We're gonna go ahead and just uh, mock it up real quick and figure out where we need to sit these so that we can go ahead and lock them in place. All right guys, we're out here with the engine and turbo in hand. Um, I just have it mocked up. This isn't all together. I just have the uh, exhaust side housing um, just mocked up onto the cartridge, onto the cold side housing. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of line everything up and see how it all fits here. This is pretty much where it's supposed to go. So if I have my exhaust side sitting right here, I got my turbo sitting right here. I gotta make sure that the inside clears everything. We're looking pretty solid right there. We got the oil return or the drain right here. Let's go ahead and mock it up. No, I definitely got to turn this cartridge a little bit more, so we'll spin the cartridge out. All right, hold it right there. Turbo drain pretty much lines up good. We're going to leave it just like that. There we go. We got the drain perfect. We got the feed up top. We'll be able to get to that no problem. And the turbo fits. It's not in the way of the header bolts or anything like that. So this is where we want our, our turbo to be uh, situated. So we're going to go ahead and lock everything up right now. I went ahead and marked the turbos. Uh, we got a mark right here for the cartridge on the hot side and then a mark up here for the cold side on the cartridge. First we're gonna fasten the cold side. Uh, we just gotta kinda press, you gotta press pretty hard because there's that, that seal on the cold side that has to be pressed in uh, pretty hard. I, I try to just kinda situate it a little bit with my hands before I go and put the C-clamp on but it's, it's tough until you actually get the C-clamp in place because that's what locks it. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our C-clamp the kit didn't come with the larger C-clamp, just the smaller one, uh, but that's fine. This thing is perfectly fine to go ahead and reuse again. Just clean it up a little bit. All right, so I put the C-clamp in there. Now, it's not completely locked in. You're going to want to start pressing down on it and uh, apply some pressure in a bunch of areas, and that will finally lock it in. You'll, you'll hear it snap into place. There it goes. 
So now we're gonna go ahead and put on our hot side housing. Go ahead and line it up with the mark that we made earlier. Now we're gonna go ahead and wrap around our metal C-clamp that came with the turbo. And what's awesome about the rebuild kit is they actually come with a new, um, a new bolt and nut that you can use to go ahead and lock down that uh, C-clamp. All right guys, and we have our driver side turbo all set, fully rebuilt cartridge, and cleaned up the internals, new seals, upgraded bearings, all of that good stuff. Also, I bought some new uh, flange gaskets from Mamba, and they come with these nice little banjo bolt um, O-rings, so we're gonna go ahead and replace the banjo bolt O-rings right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put them on the banjo bolt for the time being. Put that back. Ta-da! Alright guys, so now we're completely done rebuilding our TD-05 turbos. They feel great. I'm super stoked and I'm, I feel super accomplished that I got that done by myself. Um, but we got the two turbos rebuilt and now we're going to be upgrading our wastegate springs so that we can run some more PSI than the original stock 5.5 pound springs. You could only really triple the wastegates on a twin turbo and uh, you still don't even really want to double them to be honest with you. So we're going to be upgrading from 5.5 PSI uh, wastegate springs to 13 PSI wastegate springs. These are the green ones from Boosted Labs. So we're going to go ahead and install this in our wastegate. I don't know how I'm going to be able to compress it down, but I'm going to try my best. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start removing all of the Allen screws that are holding in this piece right here. Remove the top hat and then we'll be able to get to our spring right then and there. If you guys know, I did rebuild these wastegates except for I only replaced the diaphragm. I didn't replace any of the springs. Uh, only because I just didn't know or I didn't think I would have to upgrade them But while I have the turbos out, I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of the springs and uh, This way we can push some more boost gotta be really careful when you get down to the uh, You can feel the compression So you just gotta apply some good pressure on there so it don't shoot out at you All right, and there it is So we got our red springs in here right now Go ahead and take that out. Take our nice green spring. And now we gotta compress it. We gotta compress it all the way down. Oh, this is definitely gonna be like a two person job, I feel like. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, I'm gonna go ask for help and uh, yeah, we'll get those installed. Oh uh, gosh, I totally forgot to uh, film uh, the last bit of putting that spring back into the waste gates last night. But we did have my buddy Jesse come over. Um, I went ahead and compressed everything with my hand and then he went ahead and put all the bolts in. Got everything in there with some thread locker. Everything is good. So we got 13 PSI springs in our waste gates now. So those are all set and ready to go. Now uh, what we're gonna be working on is the clutch. But that's gonna be in the next video guys because I got a super nice deal on an action clutch and I'm gonna be revealing all of that information in the next video. I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys for all of your support and everything and 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 giving me the motivation to just go ahead and knock everything out, get it done, keep moving forward. This is just a minor hiccup in the road to 600 horsepower. So thank you guys so much for being there and reminding me that every single day. Appreciate you guys. If you're not following me on Instagram, you guys can get some little updates and everything of what we're doing. Um, it's double AG35, hit me up. Super stoked that we have our turbos done. They're looking really good. They're cleaned up. They got some new hardware. They got some new internals, new bearings, new gaskets, and even new little O-rings here for the oil feeds. We got our restrictors on our new sandwich plate instead of everything being fed from the oil pressure sensor. And we also have a nice little catch can, which I have inside, which I'm gonna be showing you guys. I don't even know if it'll fit. So um, once I put the engine together and all that, we're gonna be mocking up the catch can so that all that's gonna be vented and we won't be over boosting the crank case but either way thank you guys a ton for watching please make sure you smash that like button if you guys like this and uh some cool stuff coming in the next video and then in the video after that we're hopefully going to be getting it running again and uh maybe we can just uh you know make uh make 600 horsepower as soon as i put it together who knows we're gonna see also i got some news as far as a giveaway that we're gonna be releasing in the next video so if you guys want to get a head start every four dollars on the on the website at doubleasupply.com gives you one entry towards this giveaway this mystery giveaway i'm gonna give you guys some more information in the next video when we're putting the clutch in and then all we have to do is put the engine in the car uh bleed all the fluids and all that good stuff and then get her on the street and hopefully she'll be making 600 wheels and we won't really know until we take it the, to the dyno which i'm planning on doing that next week so got a lot of cool content coming for you guys hopefully we're gonna get this thing on the road and running mint so uh yeah look forward to that so smash that like button and i'm gonna see you guys in the next video